I can talk personally about this, I guess it's kind of the elephant in the room, because my own family, going through what we're going through today, So ordinarily, in a case involving defamation claims by a public figure, uh, the media ought to feel very confident uh, because the standard established by the New York Times versus Sullivan case from 1964 is an extraordinarily high bar. But in many of these cases, there is uh, a threshold issue, uh, which also arises, which is, was what was published false in the first place? But uh, in this case, uh, the Times has effectively conceded by issuance of its correction that it was in fact false. And so that's not a hurdle that is going to be very difficult to surmount at all. Uh, and the question will be really a sort of psychological inquiry into you know, what did the Times know and when did it know it? What should it have known? What sort of investigation did it, did it pursue or not pursue? And those will be you know, very factually uh, dependent questions that it will have to decide. The Palin versus New York Times case does uh, run the risk that uh, our conception of what a free press is and what it should be allowed to do and what sorts of mistakes are permissible uh, may well change as a consequence of this case. Uh, it could prove to be it could prove to be a landmark decision, um, and you know the uh, rules of the road that have existed uh, for the past uh, half century at least uh, could be altered by the outcome of this case.